Hey friend, in this video, we're gonna walk through some quick tips and hacks to do a DIY water install in your camper van build. Most of the plumbing piping that we use in our build is this PEC stuff. It's pretty rigid. So if you attach that straight to the pump, a lot of the vibrations from the pump itself are gonna go into your build and you're gonna hear it in the walls. It's just gonna be louder. So you can get something called a pump silencing kit. This is actually made by SureFlow. It's basically two nylon braided hoses with fittings already connected to them instead of the more firm PEX hosing. And what that does is it helps isolate the vibrations. So that's a quick first hack. The second hack is one of my favorites and that is where you end up mounting your pump. You can put it on a board and wrap that in just basically any kind of neoprene or soft rubbery product. This is actually meant to go in the bottom of drawers where dishes go or silverware goes. So if you wrap that around the board, that is another layer of sound isolation when you mount it in place. So you get the isolation between the neoprene and the board your pump's mounted to. The pump itself has a built-in isolation shock mount. If you don't have an accumulator, the pump is gonna cycle almost every time you open that tap, even for just a little bit of water. But what the accumulator does here is it allows the system to build up pressure. So that way, every time you open the tap just a little bit, it doesn't cycle on the pump. Okay, we're about four feet away from the pump. I've got the shower faucet in my hand so you can see the water coming out and I'll just do some light sprays and wait if you can hear when the pump kicks on so do you hear it there so when you do a long press it needs to cycle to pressure the accumulator but if you just do short little presses what I actually hear way more of is the mixer valve over here. Every time you use that, you can hear the mixer valve. But from this distance away, the pump is almost like silent. That makes me so happy. So the main area that your pump system connects to the rest of the piping in your van, it's a really smart idea to put a ball valve there so you can actually turn that off so that way we can disconnect the pump and not have all the water that are in the lines come back out in this low point. But then what you can do is run a little Schrader valve, like a, an air connection port, uh, right after the ball valve. And that allows you to just hook up a small little air compressor and you can open up your lines into buckets and then just basically push air through the lines to get all that water out. Okay, so my next tip is to use just a really cheap AC water heater if you want some occasional hot water now and again. So we can turn this on for the last 30 minutes of our drive, generate seven gallons of hot water. Then we can turn that off and this will actually stay hot in here or at least warm for about 24 hours. And uh, it's a pretty inexpensive way to get good hot water in your build. And we also didn't want to do a propane on-demand heater because I just kind of wanted to stay away from as much propane stuff on this build as possible. So my next tip has to do with PEX. If you've got any that you want to like hold in a specific location, you can get these little clips meant for wires. This is a 5 8 size one and it actually fits kind of perfectly right around the PEX. And that allows you to kind of do a bit of a cleaner install because we had to run some of it on the outside here for where our shower location is going. So that's just one way to do a cleaner install with PEX piping. Okay, so my next step actually just has to do with an overall install philosophy behind the piping and the plumbing that you use to connect all your different locations together. And I learned this from an actual plumber who looked at what I was doing at first and told me, hey, you don't wanna be doing that. Uh, and that is focus on using PEX piping for most of your fittings. You can do this braided hose stuff like what we see here and do like compression clamps with a little screw that you slowly tighten down. The problem with most fittings that you screw down is as vibration is created in a van down bumpy roads, those will all slowly loosen. And the problem with that is, well, then it leaks. So I recommend using PEX with compression fittings. So you can get these really uh, cool fittings that just like push on and they just hold without any crimping necessary. And that might seem like a good idea, but I would stay away from that because I've heard of people using those and getting leaks everywhere. Um, so we aren't using almost any of those in our build. Instead, I was intimidated by this, but basically you just use a copper ring around it, attach it to your fitting. And then my tip here, and this is where the tip for this section comes in, but you can just do a slight crimp with some pliers to prevent it from moving as you get your larger crimper to come in and finish off the fitting.
Okay, our next tip is a hack that I'm actually not sure is going to work yet. So we're going to try it out and hopefully I bring back positive results. So we bought a massive water tank, primarily because it was really inexpensive on Amazon. It was about 85 bucks, which is a really big win over some of the uh, more expensive custom options that are available for vans. So it's a very big water tank. And a problem that I knew right away we we're going to run into is that a big water tank has a lot of movement availability for water to slosh around. So especially now, for example, we've got about like a fifth of a tank left here. And we were, we were just driving around today and that water's just sloshing around everywhere. And so I was doing a bunch of research into DIY baffles and there's these balls that you can get, but most of them are for these really big water tanks that are a lot bigger than the openings we have on here. So I went down to the local plumbing store and I bought some rigid piping and uh, this stuff was really cheap, but the benefit of it is that it's got a thin wall and uh, it's safe to use for potable water. So it's not technically food grade, but it's safe to use for potable water, so that's good for me. And basically we're gonna cut this into about three inch sections and just cram our whole tank entirely full. So while I'm busy cutting up some pipe, let me take a quick moment to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Do you have a business that you've been waiting to start? How about a creative idea or a film that you wanna share with the world? Well, to make it official, build a website with Squarespace. They're an all-in-one solution for finding the perfect domain name, building a beautiful looking website, and getting your message out there. A feature that I personally love is its built-in tools for managing an online store. This has made it really easy for me to get my own merch store up and running and getting awesome products out there to my viewers. I recommend checking out Squarespace and see what you can build with one of their free trials. When you're ready to commit, use my link for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. It's the next day because it took us so long to do pipe offcuts for that DIY baffling thing. Uh, that, that went interesting, we'll revisit that. But in the meantime, another quick water hack. Uh, running an electric ball valve on your gray water outlet tank. Close it. Okay, so this is a $25 little valve from Amazon, and this is a dual throw momentary switch with three poles. And you can basically just cross wire the poles uh, in the specific order, so that way, when you're running 12 volts to your pump, you can reverse the polarity just by the direction that you uh, throw the switch. So I like the idea that we can just be cruising down uh, like an old logging road and just flip the switch from our center console and just start dumping water. Or maybe someone's gonna inform me in the comments that that's really illegal and that we're bad van lifers and we should never do that. In that case, it's just it's just allegedly that we are thinking about the concept that it's possible, but not necessarily that we're doing it. Okay, another tip, just put heating pads on your water tanks. If like us, you wanna make sure they don't freeze. So we're gonna have a cabin heater in the van, which is gonna keep it warm enough most days to just prevent the tanks from freezing. But let's say for some reason the heater stops working and we're not at the van, having these heat pads, they auto sense when they get too cold. So if they're connected to 12 volt, they will start warming uh, tanks to make sure they don't freeze. Obviously that's gonna drain your batteries pretty quickly if you're not plugged into shore power. Should we, uh, should we show them the tank now? All right, let's do this. <laughs> this has now been filled to the brim with little pipe cutoffs. This is kind of one of those projects that once you start it, you just see it all the way through there's because no you- There's no turning back. There's no turning back. Uh, this is our stupidest idea. Definitely don't do this. This is a really bad one. Um, total fail, total lame thing. Uh, we're gonna stick with it for now and we might just, I don't, I don't know, we're not gonna fish each thing out. Does it work as a baffling device? Totally. When this thing has water in it and you shake it around, the water doesn't slosh at all. I've got it filled from top to bottom with pipe offcuts. We probably lost about this much volume of water, which is acceptable. That if maybe we had spent several hundred dollars on a tank, we could have gotten it with a proper baffling, but this tank was 80 bucks and we just, I don't know, three hours of our time. Maybe, maybe we should have just bought the right tank, but I originally thought maybe I'd just do like a quarter of the tank, but those like definitely made a lot of noise. So anyhow, this is a hack of a solution. Maybe don't do this one and uh, you didn't get it from me. Okay, I've got two tips to leave you with on your final tank install. And that is your air outlet vent. So this basically allows air to be escaping the tank as it's filling with water. Uh, make sure that you do that in an upward angle out of the tank and then down. So I hear this is my air outlet and it's coming up the side of the pipe and then it's going all the way down through the floor. And the reason why I just don't go straight down to the floor from here is because if we were on a bumpy road, a lot of our water would slowly slosh out through that port. 
And the cool thing is, is when your tank is full, it'll just start to overflow out of the air outlet. And that's when you know your tank's full if you're not watching it very closely. So this right here is where we attach water to fill the tanks. And this basically makes sure that there's not way too much pressure coming in and also make sure the water doesn't go back out once you've filled it up. Okay, so the last thought I want to leave you with here is choose your flooring uh, in consideration of your water system. So accidents do happen. Water does crack open and get everywhere when things freeze. Uh, basically, things can go bad. So whatever flooring product you use, just be mindful of how will that flooring product respond to like 20 gallons of water all over it. Where's the water going to go? Where's its fastest exit point? So we put a rubber flooring product in our van and we sealed it around the metal edge with a bunch of sealant here, like some Sikaflex stuff. And what that allows us to do is if for some reason we've got a leak that we're not able to stop or if the tank accidentally cracks open, we can just go put the van up on a curb, just put the front wheels up so the back is leaning back and all the water will just come out the back here. It's not a, it's not a good thing, but uh, it's definitely better than just having all the water just pool inside the van. So think about where you're gonna seal the edges of your flooring and uh, maybe don't use that cheap uh, fake hardwood product. I know a lot of people who've had to pull it out when uh, they have water issues. I would love to hear your water tips down in the comments below. I'm a complete amateur. I'm a filmmaker, I'm not a van builder, but these are some of those little tiny tips and tricks that I picked up from asking lots of questions from other people and just trial and error. So please share your info down below. Let me know what you found most helpful or what you found most ridiculous. Uh, I've got an idea of what you might say, but thanks for watching this video. You can support our channel on Patreon. That's a great way to help enable us to keep making videos, but that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks so much for watching and remember. Life's better when you make stuff. Sure is. See ya.